Uh, we got the Pat Patterson tribute video package, which is just lovely. Uh, he started, I read this on Reddit, someone pointed that out. You know he was very close to Vince because Vince has forked out for the rights to My Way. Mm -hmm. which, was, which was Pat's favorite song, would sing it all the time at karaoke. There's a clip of him in the segment singing the karaoke. Uh, I was thinking about this when I watched the video package. At MediaCon two years ago, Pat Patterson was there. And on the first night, because it went Friday and Saturday, on the first night, I just got to Manchester and it was me, my lady partner and Laurie. And Kenny, Inside the Ropes Kenny, texts me, being like, Pat wants to go out tonight. Like, he wants to go for dinner. Would you like to come? And I freaked out because I was like, Any who else is going to be there? And I was just like, oh, just Kenny, Pat, and the whoever brought Pat over. And I was like, oh, God. And I, I freaked out. I couldn't. I That sounded like a very uncomfortable, like, not uncomfortable for that, those reasons. Just like, I was too scared. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to sit down and I'm like what the hell was I thinking I know but well because I because I got up to Manchester late uh that day because my wife had um well I, I'd stayed at my wife's hospital for a, for a brief uh, period of time so I was late up to get into Manchester but I remember I met you your partner and Laurie in Pizza Express and you told me that story and my first reaction was like why didn't you go like mm. why didn't you go and, and have some drink? and from what I gather because I was talking to Kenny about this the following day they had a great night yeah like, they had a a really really great night like molly spartan like she had a brilliant time hanging out with and i think jen was there as well like she was just like oh it was amazing it's like we had to, we had the best night just a force of nature going into every karaoke bar and then he would sing my way and then leave <laughs> <laughs> the next karaoke bar yeah it's, i'm such an idiot it's uh no sadder words of tongue and pen than these four words what could have been so yeah do stuff do stuff when it when it's presented to you. Don't chicken out because I'll never get that opportunity again. Uh, after that, we got the Miz TV segment oh, that we've already spoken man. about. It was they, they all did Scottish accents with AJ Styles. Seamus and Drew came out to beat him up. This was good for one moment. Drew gets Miz's Money in the Bank briefcase. He's in the ring and he lobs it the entire length of the entrance ramp. It hits the top of the stage, bounces off into one of the LED panels in the Titan Tron and breaks it. Yeah, it was impressive, man. It was, was really, amazing. really good. Yeah, yeah. That's that, like, caper tossing. Like, that's where it's all the skills that he's got from, from doing all of that. It was really, really good. I completely froze there. You did indeed. I really crapped myself because I thought it was oh. me, but it was just on. <laughs> and you froze in such a menacing manner. I was like, eh. uh, yeah. So that that was cool. They replayed it a few times in the night. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. That was a genuinely awesome thing that happened impromptu. Yes. However, this segment was horrible. Oh yeah, horrible. <laughs> Miss and Morrison are the dirt worst, man. It's not the dirt sheet. They're the dirt worst. Uh, Drew Mac, this, this is when we got the Drew McIntyre and Sheamus versus Miz Morrison and AJ Styles handicap match where Sheamus accidentally broke kick Drew. I, I wasn't into this match at all. Really. And do you know why? Do you know why? Because these two, Drew and Miz, have had matches. They've had five matches in seven weeks. Six, if you include tribute to the troops. This goes back to October of Drew beating Miz. So look, I, I, I went back through Cage Match to write this down. October 26th, Drew beat Miz. November 2nd, Drew beat Miz and Morrison. November 9th, Drew beat Miz and Morrison with the New Day. November 30th, Drew <sighs> and Sheamus beat Miz and Morrison. And then tonight, Mo Miz and Morrison finally beat Drew and Sheamus. But really, it was AJ that got the pin. And Drew beat Miz at Tribute to the Troops. Like, it is... It's the same thing. It's it's bloody Groundhog Day with these lads just having matches over and over again. The worst thing about this is when Miz do, if Miz does cash in and wins the title, we're just how could I possibly care about Drew going for the uh, for the belt again? So I'm like, well, he's just going to win. I've seen him beat Miz a thousand times on Sunday. So why should I care about him going back for the belt again? That's the trick, Luke. Because when you cash in the money in the bank shots, boom, everything's reset. You're the champ. You've got the belt now. It's all good. Oh, so rubbish. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, and I just, AJ Styles, I should be really excited for AJ versus Drew on pay-per-view, but they're, they're playing it, first of all, that feud is a joke storyline where AJ's constantly with the big guy and, you know, doing little baby-like things. Like, it's this little, little soccer mum baby. The baby community. <laughs> And that, so that isn't even the focus. Like I would say that the top focus is Drew Sheamus. The next focus is Drew Miz. And then there's this comedy AJ storyline beneath that that's on the pay-per-view. So I think uh, it's it'll be that classic, well, that was a crap build, but a really good match. Yeah, totally. Because they'll have a great match. Mm. Um, I did actually mean to check because they kept saying that it is the first time ever. Did they not have a match in TNA? Did their paths not cross? So, sorry. Did their paths not cross when they were in TNA? They might no. not have because AJ might have gone over to Japan by that point. I think it already left, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't think of it. Oh, God. I just saw what's up next. I forgot oh, yeah. this happened. Oh, yeah. Slapjack and Reckoning took on Ricochet and Dana Brooke. Ricochet and Dana Brooke are backstage. They got interviewed uh, saying how they're going to team up to take on Retribution. I was like, I genuinely don't know what way this is going to go. Who do WWE care least about here? Ricochet <laughs> and Dana Brooke or Retribution? But the answer is Retribution, is it? Because Dana's in a tag team with Mandy. So like, once Mandy's getting back, they're getting the big push again. Well, yeah, and, and you were right, because this match went about a minute and Dana Brooke mm. just pinned Reckoning, Mia Yim, a brilliant wrestler, <laughs> just relegated oh, yeah. to nothing here. In about a minute, yeah, and Ali screamed at both of them and walked off again. Yeah. Do you remember like there was that AEW tag match a few weeks back where it was Pac and Phoenix versus Butcher and the Blade? Mm. We were like, man, they started at 11. And like they never sort of slowed down from 11. Well, this match started at 11 and it had to because it was only going a minute and they wanted to get all of their spots in. So like this match, these lads, uh, all of them went a thousand miles a minute because they were like, well, we've got to do something. We haven't got much time. And yet, and then Dana Brooke just wins. And do you know what the, the positive about this was? Is the Reckoning's mask stayed on this time. So she didn't look silly. So this is the second week in a row where Reckoning has picked up a loss for Retribution and Ali has shouted at her and stormed off. I don't think there's any plan here. I no, just think, not. no, I just think they're like, well, just do this for this week. We'll figure yeah. it out next week. Of course, there's no plan here. Just four weeks ago, Reckoning was saying she was going to go after Asuka. And now she's eaten two pins in a, in a row. She's had two matches on Raw and she's eaten the pin in both of them. There's zero plan here. Well, the, by that logic, though, she'll be getting a, the, the next title shot at Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think everyone needs to get away from this group, but reckoning more than most right now. And then she. Did you see um, Mia Yim fighting for the title? Did you see uh, Dijak's tweet over the weekend? Um, the one to Tony about Khan? No, oh no, I didn't see the one to Tony Khan. It was the one when uh, Gargano sort of revealed, like, the, uh, you know, the, the ghost face things. And he was just like, I did wonder where all of our other retribution mates went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's fun. It's fun that they <laughs> have to resort to being witty on Twitter. Dude, I was told time and time again, that's the characters on TV. You're just not seeing it because you're not paying enough close attention to Twitter. Bollocks, mate. It's just they're, they're having a laugh at their own crap gimmick. <laughs> 